Production funding for Homework Hotline is provided by New York State United Teachers. Working to educate and assist students, provide medical care and support, and strengthen local communities. NYSEC, working for communities across New York State. Hey now, let's take a moment So we all can figure it out What it's all about It's the Homework Hotline The Homework Hotline The Homework Hotline The Homework Hotline And welcome to Homework Hotline. I'm Joe Zaniga. And I'm Sam Simpson. Homework Hotline is the place where you can get the tools you need to succeed both in and out of the classroom. All right, now for more information about Homework Hotline, go to our website, homeworkhotline.org. Here you can find games and other online resources and the latest episodes of our show. And don't forget, we want to hear from you on this topic. Should all forms of public transportation, such as buses and subways, be free? Why? Well, why not? All right, now you can weigh in on this topic and tell us what you think by visiting us on Facebook and leaving us a message or tweeting us by using the hashtag HHVoiceIt or by visiting our website, homeworkhotline.org and clicking on the Voice It button. Remember, the most thought-provoking responses will be put on the air. The answers will be shared on next Wednesday's Homework Hotline. Today is Thursday, and that means it's time for our science challenge. What do you got for this this week, Joe? Well, you know, I'm going to recycle some of the things we used a few weeks ago okay. and ask a different question. So this is the candle we had a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, so we've got a candle burning. And the nail that I had, I just have it sitting in some water, yeah. and that was plain water, but it doesn't look like water, does it? Yeah, it's no, kind it's, of yellowish there. And so what's happened is this nail in water, I don't know if you can see the nail itself, but you can certainly see it in the water, has started to rust, right? Yeah. All right. So... There's chemical reactions going on in both places, and that water would put the candle out, right? Yes, it would. But it also caused, or helped to cause that nail to rust. Okay. And actually, Sam, it's the same reaction going same on in reaction. both places. Okay, wow. All right, and actually, that's gonna be our question. So okay. our question tonight for our science challenge is, what is that reaction that's taking place in both of our examples here? Again, our science challenge for tonight is, what reaction is taking place in both examples? If you think you can solve the science challenge, give our hotline a call at 1-866-264-5904 or just answer it on our website, homeworkhotline.org. Answer correctly and you can have a chance to share the answer at the end of the show. All right, but now remember every correct response we have to our hotline hall of fame and if you earn enough points, you can entable it at the end of the season. Now this week on Homework Hotline, we've been looking at budgets and hourly pay rates. Tonight on, or today on Homework Hotline, we look at Joaquin notices that his paycheck estimates are off because of taxes. And we're going to help him figure out the difference between net pay and gross pay. Then we'll look at how we can apply some of those concepts we've learned with budgets today's science challenge on why there are less hours of sunlight during the winter months. Okay. All right. I wish you could figure a way to get more of my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look. Let's go okay. over the board and let's work with Joaquin some more and help him out. So one of the, the question is, you know, Joaquin has been working and uh, he's going to get that first check and what's going to happen, it's going to surprise him and it's going to surprise a lot of people when they get their first check is, I thought I should be making this, but my check says this. What's the difference and what's going on there? So let's take a look at Joaquin and see if we can help him out as he gets his first check. Really what we're going to be trying to do is figure out the difference between net pay and gross pay. Um, what will be Joaquin's gross pay and net pay for his first paycheck? One of the things that we were looking at yesterday is we noticed that um, Joaquin has finished his first two weeks on the job. In this particular job, he gets paid every two weeks. And uh, uh, we want to know what will be his gross pay and his net pay for that ch uh, first paycheck. Well, there's some terms here I want to go, go over with you. What's the difference between net pay and gross pay? Well. For a wage earner, anybody who works for someone and gets paid based on an hourly rate, 
their net pay is what's left, the residual means what's left, the amount that's left of your earnings, or actually, it's, let's kind of flip that around. You get your gross pay. Your gross pay is what you're going to get paid for how many hours you work times your hourly rate. That's your gross pay. Your net pay, however, is there's a bunch of deductions that get deducted out. The results, after you subtract out those deductions, that's your net pay. That's what surprised everyone. You think you're going to get this gross check of your gross pay and you end up getting this, this net pay. So let's take a look with, at Joaquin. So his gross pay is his hourly rate times his hours worked. Um, if you remember, he selected the department store job where he was going to work 15 hours. And he was getting paid $9.50 an hour. So for that week's worth of pay, he'd make $142.50. If that's your first job, that's a good amount for your first check for one week's pay. But we said that a lot of places, some places pay every week, some places pay every two weeks, some places pay every month. Where I work, they pay me every two weeks. So we've got Joaquin getting paid every two weeks. So his first check, and it's, I want to know what his gross pay was going to be for that first check. All I'm going to do is multiply his weekly pay times two. And if I do that, I get uh, O times two is going to give me, oh, that's going to be $285. That's what his first check is going to be. Now, that check is for two weeks. That is his gross pay. So his gross pay will be $285. So that's when he gets that check, that's what he's going to be looking for. When you get your first check, you're probably going to be looking for that gross pay as well. But the reality of it is, there's a bunch of deductions that come out. Now, I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about what they are, specifically for New York. So different states, they're a little bit different. For different municipalities, depending on where you live in the New York state, they might be a little different. There are, I've listed uh, five of them here. The first one is your federal tax. The federal tax goes to the United States government. What is federal tax used for? It's used for things like, oh, paying for our military, maybe some major highways, uh, air traffic control, a lot of things that the whole United States use, the whole government uses. Even things like if you have uh, disasters, um, the federal uh, government will come and help for that. That's what those federal taxes are. And that rate varies. One of the things that they're talking about in Congress right now is they're trying to give some adjustments to those federal tax rates. But they vary from about 10% to 39%. And typically what happens when you work, they're going to take some of that money out. They're not going to generally, they're not going to wait until the end of the year or come the tax time for you to uh, give it to them. They're going to take some out. And they typically take anywhere between 10 and 39.6%, but I'm just going to put 10% over there. Social Security tax and Medicare tax. Notice those are both in red. That means this, you can actually play with that a little bit. You can say take out a little bit more federal government, take out a little bit less. But Social Security and Medicare, they always take it out and they take it out at these percents. So Social Security, what is that used for? Well, when you get at least 62 to 65 and you want to retire, they're going to give you a check, and it comes from the federal government. They're going to take a percent out, 6.2%. And if you work for someone, your employer also pays a 6.2%. And you'll get a check when you're 65, approximately 66. Medicare is, well, that's used for when you also, when you retire, you're about 65. You need to get your health insurance. This actually pays for doc doctor's visits and so on. They take it out automatically, 1.45% of every dollar you make. These dollars come out from every job you will ever have. The next two are kind of unique to New York. 
New York state tax varies between 4% and 8%. I say they're going to take out 4%. City tax? Well, where I live out, they don't, where I live at, they don't take out any city tax. But if you live in New York City, they may take out some city tax. You add all of those taxes up, it's approximately, it could be more, generally never less. 24.55%, but I'm just going to estimate it and round it up to say they're going to take out 25% of your pay for taxes. So if I want to figure out, I know what his gross pay was. His gross pay was 285. Now I want to figure out what his net pay. His net pay is going to be his gross pay less those deductions. And I said those deductions are 25%. So I need to find 25% of 285. And if the way I do that is I take 0 0.25 times 285, and I'm going to pull up my calculator and do that. 0.25. Okay. Now it's not going to work for me here. Let's try it again. There we go. There it is. 0.25. <laughs> Can you give me a calculator? So if you multiply 285, oh, there's a couple of them up there. 285 by that we get, this one's not on. <laughs> I started. 71.25, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that from 285. And I get, that's going to give me his net pay, and his net pay is going to be $213.75. So for Joaquin, he was thinking he was going to get $285, where in reality, what he ended up getting is $213.75. Gross pay, net pay. So when you get your first check, Know the difference between gross pay and net pay. Hope that helped out Joaquin. Having trouble deciding what the author's purpose is? Why don't you have some pie? Persuade, inform, entertain. Authors write to persuade or convince the reader of a certain point of view, to inform or teach the reader new information, or to entertain the reader. And now let's take a look at this week's Hotline Book Reviews. Check them out. Hi, my name is Joey. Have you ever read a book about a dog that is also a human, that is also a cop? Well, today you could hear all about one. The book is called Dogman, and it is written by Dave Pilkey. The story takes place in Dogman's town, where all of the trouble happens. That is also where you will figure out how Dogman was created. Dogman is a funny guy, but he messes around a lot. That comes from the dog side of him, but he really takes his job seriously, which is where his human side jumps in. He does not let a single crime get by him. Petey is Dogman's arch enemy. He is so evil that he turns himself invisible just to get out of jail but Dogman found a way to stop him. All Petey wants is to see how Dogman gets so smart, but after he figures that out, he'll just try to kill Dogman. All Dogman wants is to be a police officer and save the world from Petey's evil ways, because Petey did something really bad to Dogman, and he doesn't want anyone to go through the same pain he did. There are many conflicts in this story, but the main one is the mayor is evil. She
she was the one who gave Petey the invisibility spray. Just because she said if Petey gets out one more time, she will replace the chief with a robot. But they don't know the robot is evil. Do you think Dogman will lock up Petey for good? Do you think he'll save the town? Read Dogman to find out. Hello, my name is Sarah. Do you like books that are adventurous and books that are magical? If you do, this is the book for you. Amulet, the Stonekeeper by Kazu Kibushi is the first book of the Amulet series. I'm only doing the first one, but if you like this book, I recommend reading the others too. After Karen and their mom get sucked up by a monster, Emily and Naven end up walking into the land of Elidia that was created by Karen's grandfather Silas. They came there originally to save their mom, but they can't go back to Earth. Emily is the main character in the story. She is also the new stonekeeper of the amulet. Emily is caring and kind. She loves her mother and brother and cares for her friends. She doesn't want anyone getting into danger alone or getting hurt. Naven is Emily's brother. Naven likes video games. He likes them so much he thinks he can drive an airplane because he did it in a game once. Naven doesn't really trust the amulet though. He thinks that the amulet will hurt Emily, but Naven cares for his family and is like Emily's sidekick. Once Karen gets sucked up in the monster and Emily and Naven get to the great-grandfather Silas' house, they use a machine and try to find Karen, and, well, that's their first crazy man adventure. All these monsters and the Elf King's daughters after them and keeping them from saving Karen. So, will Emily accept the amulet's power? Will they get past the monsters? And will they save Karen? Read the book to find out. Hi, my name is Jasmine. Today I'll be talking about a book called Sisters by Rena Telgemeier. If you like graphic novels, then this is a good book for you. This is the second book of the series, so I recommend reading the first book, Smile. This book takes place at a campsite in Lovelock, Nevada, and at Rena and Amara's house in San Francisco. On their way camping, they go through many problems. During their car ride, the car breaks down, Rena and Amara's mom leaves them in the car to go find a tow truck. During their long way, Amara's pet snake escapes in the car. A terrible rainstorm even forces them to go off the road. Luckily, they finally reach their destination. The main characters in this book are sisters, Rena and Amara. Amara is a kind, loving girl, but hates her sister, Rena. They are like sworn enemies. In this book, there are some yellow pages, which are flashbacks from Rena and Amara's life. In one place, they take a flashback to when Rena and Amara got a pet snake. Rena was freaked out, and so she screamed. Rena wants to see her cousins, but they were all mean to her when she saw them. They even called her a baby. So now all she wants is to go home to her dad. But she is stuck with her cousins in Lovelock, Nevada for two days. Rena can't go home yet. She wishes her dad was with her at the moment. Do you think Rena will get home to her dad? Will her cousins be nice to her again? Why is family so complicated? Read Sisters to find out. Well, I was sold on Joey. I mean, he, he sold me. <laughs> he had the props. He had, he had the, the props. <laughs> Everybody's evil. The dog is a cop. Dog is good. Good trumps over evil. I want to read the book. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> and they're all good. These kids do a tremendous job. Yes, they do. All right. Now, if you'd like to see this video again or others like it, remember you can go to our website, homeworkhotline.org. Okay. All right. I've got a little lesson kind of uh, on yours. We're talking cool. about budgets. So... Um, I'm going right. to go to the board here, and what I said, you know, the Joaquin noticed that as, ho as the holidays were approaching, his days were getting shorter, so if he wanted to play outside, he had to budget his time. All right, so let's look what's going on here. Really, how long is a day? Are the days really getting shorter? Well, if we think uh, of a day from noon one day to the noon the next, the, the, the time of a day is still 24 hours. What we really mean when we say that is our hours of daylight here in the northern hemisphere are getting shorter. So. Here we have a couple pictures of the Earth from space. This is the Earth and actually the Moon. And we think of the phases of the Moon because we know that the Moon is always half illuminated by the Sun. But we don't ever think about that's the same case with the Earth here. The Earth is always half illuminated by the Sun. So if you notice the Moon and the uh, Earth are both illuminated on this side, and that's because the Sun here, oop. Well, you know what, Sam? It's the same problem you have. I don't think uh, you had it stuck on the marker thing. So we'll, oop, now I lost it. Hmm. Oh, I must have bumped into something, Sam. I'm going to go on to the next. I'll go to the next slide. Okay. I think. Can I help you? Oh, yeah, maybe you can, because it's not uh, clicking here. I'll have you click, click the next slide if you can, please. Thank you.
Okay. All right, what I was gonna try to do is this is actually the sun. I was gonna pull the sun out and we could see these, uh, these were take, this picture was taken from Apollo 8. You know, we're used to looking at pictures of the earth like this where we're seeing the whole illuminated part. This would actually be the sun and we see if the sun's over in that direction. Notice we're illuminating half the earth and oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you can. Ah, great, thanks Sam. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> All right, so we see that the sun is actually always illuminating half the Earth, but because the Earth is tilted in its orbit, that half differs for us by season. So, um, so let's go to the next one. I'll have, I won't even risk it, Sam. I'll just have you do it. All right, so these are from Apollo 11, and it's the same thing. Here we can see the Earth from looking over the, over the moon, but we notice that half the Earth half the moon are always illuminated. I have to go to the next one. I'm going to skip through this to the next thing. And so really what's happening, our daylight is getting shorter, is we're heading towards a day called the winter solstice. Now for this year, that's going to be on December 21st, and here in Rochester, it's actually going to be at 1127 Eastern Standard Time in the morning. Okay, that's our shortest duration of sunlight for the whole year. We call that the winter solstice. That day, we're, only, we're going to have six hours and 24 minutes less than we had on the summer solstice, and that's usually around June 20th or June 21st, and that's our longest duration of daylight for a day. So notice that's quite a significant six and a half hour difference in the amount of daylight. I would go to the next one. Thank you, Sam. All right, if we look at this data, this is here in Rochester, and I'd, um, I don't think that's gonna slide down, but if we looked at this, oh, thank you, Sam. What we're gonna, we see is if we look at the time of sunrise and sunset each day, and I know you can't see this, but on November 21st, the first day I started keeping track for us, we had nine hours and 31 minutes of daylight. Today, on November 30th, we're only going to have 9 hours and 15 minutes, so a full 16 minutes shorter than we had just, uh, you know, a little over a week ago on the 21st. So what we're losing now is about a minute and a half a day. We're using, up here we're losing about 2 minutes of daylight a day, and that's because the Earth's orbit isn't exactly round either, as well as it being tilted on its axis. Let's go to the next one. I'm not going to be able to see that very well, but thank you, Sam. So, this one you might be able to see a little bit better. That day I told you it was going to be that winter solstice, that shortest day. That day the sun is going to rise here at 7.39 and set at 4.38. We're going to only have 8 hours, 59 minutes, and 11 seconds of daylight. So roughly a little, a little less than 9 hours of daylight. And the reason is because of, like we said before, that tilt in the Earth's orbit. But the thing that's surprising, and a lot of kids think it's because we're getting further from the sun, we're actually, if you go to the next one, I'll skip ahead to this because we only got a minute here. We're actually getting, we'll go to the, we'll, we'll, yep. Um, we're actually getting close to the sun. On November 21st, when I talked about before, we we're 91,822,000 miles away from the sun. Today, we're gonna be, it's a little bit lower, but I can still see this one on the 20th. We're at 91,698,000. Uh, so really what we're seeing is we're getting closest to the sun and the day that we're going to be the closest is actually the beginning of January. Remember I said it once again that the Earth's orbit isn't exactly uh, a circle but it's elliptical. So if you want to play outside, budget your time. The days are getting shorter but we're almost there where we're going to turn around and they'll start getting longer again. A verb is an action word such as jump, think, write, or watch. Verbs are one of the main parts of a sentence. For example, I'm running home. In this sentence, running is the verb. All right, we've got a winner in our science challenge, Sam. Hello, Molly, are you there? Yes. Molly, what's going on in both of these re reactions? What's, up? what's our answer? The fuck. Hmm? Okay, I don't know if we got that. The, the answer that Molly, Molly gave us, which is the correct answer, is this is oxidation. Mm -hmm. and both these, in both of these reactions, the in this case, the candle, the, the uh, paraffin that's burning, in this case, the iron in the, in, the, uh, in the nail are reacting with the oxygen in the air and a little help from the water in this one. Yes. But 
Okay, so that's an, we call it oxidation reaction, but that's reacting with oxygen. And oxygen, you know, is so reactive, Sam, if it wasn't for the plants continuously mm -hmm. replenishing it, we wouldn't have any in the atmosphere. Wow. It would get, it would wow. be all right. So, so what is rust? Rust is actually iron oxide. Okay. All right, and we can see it more on the water than we can on the nail in this case, but, okay. yep. Yeah. And us up here in the north and our cars, the same things happen to our cars yes, it often. Is. Yes. Good job, all right. Molly. Yeah, all right. Congratulations, Molly. But don't forget, every correct response goes to our homework Colline Hall of Fame. Earn enough points, you can win one of those tablets at the end of the season. That's all that we have time for tonight. Monday on Homework Hotline, we'll be taking a look how Brittany and how much money she really saved on those holiday deals. See you then. Good night. Bye, guys. Production funding for Homework Hotline is provided by New York State United Teachers. Working to educate and assist students, provide medical care and support, and strengthen local communities. NYSEG, working for communities across New York State.